Bible, as promised, this is the same seeds. I have a ton of them here, and my version of actually stratifying and sprouting seeds, and of course your germination test. I think I had to put you down like that for this one. I don't script my videos. I need to do it as a... I have my props and I talk about them. Something like you used to do with show and tell in school. The first, uh, let's see, what are we going to do? Right here, our spaghetti squash seed. You remember, we did that. And here we are, it's the 29th. Okay, we have six that have well sprouted. And four, seven that have well sprouted. And three that haven't shown signs of sprouting yet. In the end, I got ten out of ten sprouted. And so these are the seeds I saved in total. All of them are well formed. There's 226 seeds in here that should be, according to my germination test, good seed. Kale blue curled scotch. That was growing out, if you remember, the southwest corner of the sunny plot. That's where these seeds come from in the last growing season. And as you can see, I have quite a few. These are marigolds I sow from the marigolds that were growing out by the front fence. Now here, I have three sets of sunflowers. This is the last three sunflower heads that I harvested. And so I put them into uh, do a germination test. It was a little bit ago when I let them dry out. But you see the little strings there? That was the sprouts coming out from the small black sunflower seeds. The white ones, not one sprouted. So that's this pack. And these two, all of them sprouted. So I'm going to do a germination test with these. This is the black oil sunflower. That's the one that was growing up behind the uh, sunny patch. And it was well developed. These, these should be good. What have I got here? Okay, this is the aster that was out beside the front step. Yeah, I'll put them in a little tray and see what comes. If it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. That's that big daisy-like plant that's out there by the front step. That is a perennial. So here's another. Oh, this is the false sunflower. This is not a sunflower plant. So I'm really hoping that these grow. I really like this plant. It's my lamb's quarter seed. As you can see, they have really tiny seeds. So that's a lot of seed that I have to start lamb's quarter plants with. The California poppy, if you go back through my uh, videos, you'll see where I grew the Jacob's cattle baking beans last year. In one of the beds, there was what looked to be a poppy, a, a yellowish orangish poppy growing. It's not a true poppy, but it's called California poppy. And the seeds, they look like poppy seeds, but the uh, pod doesn't. So I have quite a few California poppy seeds. And I sprinkled some seeds out by the front fence, wondering if they would just grow come spring. So that's two things we're looking at with those. These are the Detroit but dark red beet seed that I have. Now with beet seed, I showed you the test that I'm doing here and I think I'm going to start my beet seed that way and then plant them out uh, the second week of June. 
So I'll plant those and some of the other ones that I bought. Pigweed, aka red rooted amaranth. I have quite a few of those seed. So our two what is still wild plants about lamb's quarter and amaranth uh, they're greens plus grain plants I have those to work with you remember the cabbage that went to seed out in the cold frame there on the south side so there's the seed I have we'll be trying those out This is what dock seed looks like. Technically, you can take that, that is the seed coat and all. The seed itself is really tiny thing. If you were going to use it as flour, it's not much good because you got, it's mostly just coat. But if you wanted a fiber additive, then you can grind up this coat as something like all brand same ideal. The real reason for dock is it grows huge leaves for uh, chop and drop. Eggplant Ping Tong Long. So last year I had the one eggplant uh, fruit growing out there and I left it there as long as I could. And I took the seed out of it. I haven't yet done a germination test on these. So that's my saved seeds. I kind of like to point out something about saving seeds. If you go online, you check, and you say, well, you want to save seeds from this crop, and you got to have this huge isolation distances, and you got to do this, you got to do that. The thing is, if you're growing a really diverse garden, then there's a lot of flowers for your pollinators to pollinate. There will be a lot, let's say, this spaghetti squash for instance. I plant these here. I plant another squash 20 feet over. Now, that's too close for your isolation distance. The reality is, the chances that this spaghetti squash will cross with that other squash is very low. But if you're going to be producing seed to sell and you say this is vegetable spaghetti, well you have to be sure, you have to be 100% sure that that's vegetable spaghetti. And that little bit of a chance that they're going to cross is way too much for you to be producing seed to sell. And the other thing is if it is absolutely critical for yourself that you not have any hybridization. So when you're saving your own seeds, you can save them. And I might go for years and never get an hybrid spaghetti, never have this spaghetti squash hybrid with one of the other squash I'm growing. But one year I set a seed, it comes out and it's got some weird looking squash on it. Well, obviously I know that that squash has got crossed with one of the others. So if I don't want that weird looking squash, well I won't save the seeds from that one. I'll just save the seeds from the ones that still looks like spaghetti squash. So with respect to saving your seeds, give them a little bit of isolation distance. But really don't fret about it. I'm going to put my tree seeds in for stratifying. I have three, four, five, six, seven type tree seeds to put in. Now this what I have here. Coffee is one of the most popular beverages in the world. And you can buy them in these sizing container, 925 grams. So you take the lid from your coffee container once you've got it emptied. Margarine is another very popular item in many North American households. I found the three pound and the two pound around here anyway, 
the lid's about the same size. So we take the lid from that, and they fit really snugly together. They're just the right size for the margarine container lid to nest inside the coffee container lid. There's another type of coffee container, another coffee brand that has lids that look like this. It is has its pros and cons. This one's a little deeper. What we're going to do, instead of using the baggie and folding up a paper towel, wetting it down, putting your seeds on it, or putting the paper towel in, trying to get wet in there, trying to get your seeds in the bag and spread out properly. I'm going to be using toilet paper, but it's the same material. You put down several pieces in here. Take a container, spray bottle with water. Now you want to fold these pieces that are sticking out in over because they'll wick the water out of your setup here and then your stuff will dry out really fast if you don't do this. Okay, I'm going to put one more there, over here. Now, this is my Carolina Allspice. It needs 30 to 90 days of cold moist stratification. I'll take them out, I'll dump them out in the other lid. Oh, they're large. Should have known that, eh? Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, twelve, fifteen. Now, if you had really small seeds, you wouldn't need to put anything over the top of them, really. But these are larger seeds, so I'm going to put a layer over the top. Thus, close it up, make sure you label everything, and the date today, February the 18th, if my memory serves me correctly, yes. So on uh, just shortly after February, March, April, just shortly after April the twenty, April the twentieth, somewhere around there, these will come out. So now we take them. Go in the cold room. Oh, I got. Turn the light on. <clears throat> this is my extra fridge here. I'm going to check the temperature. I've got a thermometer in here, you see? So we're setting at 4 degrees. Well, actually, it's going up now. It was down to two when I opened the door. And that should be plenty for a cold stratification. Now the advantage for this other type, as I said, is deeper. Let me see, I get one here for you. It's empty. I think I'm going to reuse that. But as you can see, it's, it goes down quite deep here. 
and your other top is up here. So you have almost a half inch of depth there. And the good thing about that is that if you want, you can do this. Now I had the seeds taken out of here. There was the uh, cherry seeds. Put soil or peat moss or whatever in here. Birch leaf pear uh, requires 90 days of cold moist stratification. So let's see what the seeds are like out of these. Here's a good one. You see, the thing I don't like about using soil like this is that when you're doing this, you can take your container out, you can lift the butter container lid off, and you can see all your seeds. You can see exactly which ones have sprouted, which ones have not. Very easily, much easier than you can with the uh, baggy method. These seeds, they're, well, one, they're a tan color, two, they're big enough, so I can spread them out and just press them into this. Let's see how many I got, of course. But with really small seeds or dark seeds, you can't really see the seeds among the soil. 32. What does the packet say? So the packet contains 20 seeds. They do it by weight, you see. I have 32 seeds there. Let me just press them in. Now, of course, you have to check on these every once in a while, but you just have to do it with the baggy method as well. And if they're starting to dry out, uh, then you uh, just spray them again. But if you have really good intact lids, they don't usually do that. That was the Osage Orange. And that's your setup. I'll go and finish the rest now. There's another way of doing these, but I will follow directions. I'm going to put the birch leaf pear in that one. Just a minute. I'm going to put these in soil. They're big enough to hand count, you see. Now for the apricot, I just stick them there on the shelf for the first 60 days. watching. I'll see you in the next video.